Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matthias, and today we're going to talk about Richard Haas and his book, World in Disarray. The last time we covered this author, we talked about the concept of R2P, responsibility to protect. There are many cases where R2P completely fails. He mentions the two most contemporary examples when he wrote this book. So he talks about Syria and Libya, and nowadays we can throw into that sad list, uh, Gaza, everything that's going down there at the moment. But right now, we're going to focus on Syria, which it's a fascinating case. So in the case of this nation, it has been ruled by a authoritarian regime for at least 45 years at the moment of the writing of this book. It has been under the thumb of the Al-Assad family, which they are part of an ethnic minority of this country, which is a religious group called the Alawites. Hass gives us the statistic that they're around 10 to 15 percent of the population. I would love to check demographically where we would be at with this group at this moment now. But the thing is that they are a ethnic and religious minority over a Sunni Muslim majority. So the author mentions that for decades, Syria was a pretty stable country, but it was owed to the fact that this regime was tremendously brutal. He cites this case in 1982 where between 10 to 20,000 people which were Sunni Muslims, were massacred in Hama. It was a hotbed of activity for the Muslim Brotherhood. And basically, the regime wanted to set an example. They went in really hard. And the main idea was, no one should question our authority. If not, this would be the cost. Then we jump to 2011, 2012. We have the Arab Spring. And here we have the Syrian government doing their basic modus operandi just trying to quell any type of protest, being tremendously brutal. But the thing is that there was an escalation in the protests. The population wasn't willing to take it. And basically things went from bad to worse to even more worse. It was very sad, the whole situation, to the point that we got a full-blown civil war in the country. Syria's people really wanted Bashar al-Assad to step down. They wanted democratic elections. But the thing is that Bashar al-Assad wasn't going to take it. So, as normally as expected, Bashar al-Assad's regime received a tsunami of sanctions. But this did not affect the whole situation in the country because the regime was backed by the Russian government economically, militarily. And another thing that started to happen is that the opposition forces to the government started to fall in line with some questionable actors like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And the brutality that the civilian population had to go through was just so inhuman. And adding to this very complicated situation and sort of throwing gas into the fire, you had the United States, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Turkey, all backing different insurgent groups, freedom fighters, whatever you want to call them. And all these different factions were fighting against the Bashar al-Assad regime and amongst each other. It was pretty much just a clusterfuck. It's like everyone threw their hats into the conflict instead of trying to pacify the situation. This led to around 11 to 12 million people being displaced within the country. You had a gigantic surge of refugees in the region and trying to find their way to Europe. The book doesn't give the statistics of how many people left the country, but I'll look them up, put them in the video. But the thing is that Hass mentions that in the case of Syria, no one stepped into the conflict trying to halt the hostilities between the parts. Pretty much all the countries that got involved got involved militarily in trying to help their faction or the side that they wanted to win. Where all the participating actors had a zero-sum mentality. No one had in mind the protection of the civilian population. It was like, be damned with them. And it was one of the worst humanitarian disasters of the 21st century. So I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.